Um, all right, we'll, we'll move on. Um, we're just going to talk about the quarterly meeting on the 16th and the 2nd, and then we're going to hear from Lorraine, who's very welcome, who's in, in the caravan um, where, where she's just come back to, to that part of the world, having been born and brought up in Cumbria, who's going to talk to us about the Anne Frank um, Trust, which is a really interesting sounding organisation, which has now got a, a Cumbrian voice. And then we're going to look at the open studios that are coming up that are currently in place um, with the Evan Open Studios and also the, the Round the Art, um, the Round the Island Art Trail, which takes place in North Cumbria, which Al Critchlow um, helps pull together. We're going to hear about that as well. And then also from Will Rees, who's there. Are you at the Beacon uh, this morning, Will, in Whitehaven? Just come off mute there, Will. Sorry about that. Hi, yes, I am at the Beacon this morning. <laughs> The, uh, the first exhibition of the Deep Time project is being built at the moment. So we'll hear about that too. Um, so lots to pack in on this morning. And first of all, Kate, would you like to just mention next week's meeting and what the point of it is and how people can get involved? Yeah, so one <coughs> week today, we'll actually be able to get together in person, face to face, for real. Um, at Rose Hill Theatre in Whitehaven, we have our next quarterly meeting. Uh, which is going to run from 9.45 to 2 o'clock, including a free lunch, and it absolutely is free lunch. Um, the main point of the day is to focus on the Arts Council's investment principle of inclusivity and relevance. It matters for all kinds of really important reasons, but it's also important if you're ever in thinking of applying for Arts Council funding or indeed any public funding, really, it's a subject that you need to get your head around. So that's, the, that's why we're focusing on it. Um, it the, the speaker lineup is terrific and it's headed by Safina Aziz, who is the Director of Inclusion for Curious Minds. Curious Minds are the bridge organisation funded by Arts Council to bring young people and cultural experiences together to give more young people access to culture. Uh, so her job is, is she's going to come and talk to us about what, what, what inclusion means and what it looks and feels like uh, and her experience of it. Um, a whole range of other really great speakers. I'm not going to go into details now. You can find the information on um, the website. The link to book is in the chat. Uh, we really do need you to book in advance so that we can get the catering right. It is possible to attend on Zoom if you would like, and codes will come around in the usual way on a Friday morning if you can't make it for one reason or another. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing people next Friday. Please do come along if you can. Did you mention the free lunch? I did mention the free lunch. Okay. I think they got the idea. And a bit of live music as well. Oh, yeah, so live music be, from Dave Cameron. Yeah, and it'll just be nice to see people in the flesh. So be hopefully lovely to see you there if you can make it. But as Kate said, we'll bring it, yeah. we'll be streaming it as well. We were there was about 40 folk coming so far, so the numbers are going to be good. Um, but there's plenty of room. Do keep signing up. Okay, thanks very much, Kate. Right, let's cross to Wally then and to say hello to Lorraine Jones. And Lorraine, I'll get your slides up in a second. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself first of all, Lorraine, while I do that, and then the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It really is a pleasure to be here and just see so many nice faces. And we're all Cumbrian based, so we've got that connection. My slides do sort of provide a little bit of uh, who I am as well and my journey so far. So, you know, you get a bit of insight into why I'm doing what I do and how, um, how it threads through the work that I do as well and some of the decisions I've made in life. You might recognise some of the artists in this first slide, um, but this is just to illustrate a little bit about me and then I will um, I will place more emphasis on the Anne Frank Trust and the work that I need to do and I want to do in Cumbria. Uh, so yes, I'm Lorraine Jones. I was raised in Barry and Furness, Cumbria, um, and there's some nice little images there of the Barra Town. I do remember the Queen visiting Baratown and throwing a bottle of champagne at some sort of ship. I was a brownie at that time. Um, I went off a Barra school. Uh, education wasn't so good back in the 80s, but I did get a couple of GCSEs. But more importantly, I had access to artists. My school was brilliant. They brought in Welfare State International based in Ulverston, did loads of projects with them. I remember being part of the Barracudas and moving from having no rhythm, playing the Shakers right up to playing a drum which was incredible. Pete Moser, 
um, working with him with more music, doing some work in community, in the community. And then um, part of my work experience at Alpha Barra School, Riff Raff Arts, Sarah Miller and Kath Irwin were um, based in our school basement, working on community projects. And when I was asked, what do I want to do for my work experience? Rather going into an office and doing some admin, I said, I want to work with them down there for two weeks. And so I did some community work, painted a mural in Barra Town Centre, it's still there. And then they said to me, do you fancy coming to Gambia with us and uh, working with locals in Sakuta village and we'll live with them as well. So I had that experience. So luckily my head teacher was all for it. So I spent three weeks in the Gambia. So I was really inspired and I'm really fortunate because I think without that, I wouldn't be where I am in my career today. And that's the kind of thing I want to do, I want to give back as well as obviously feel enriched by the arts and the work that I do with the Anne Frank Trust. I, I agree, completely amazing experiences and I'm really, really grateful. This led to me leaving Barrow <laughs> to go to Carlisle because they didn't do drama or performing arts in uh, Barrow and Furness. There was nothing available. So my teacher said, you need to go to Carlisle, to Carlisle College. So I lived there for two years and I got a BTEC. And then the people around me started to apply to university and I was like, what's this? What do we do? And so we're uh, writing out our uh, UCAS applications, non-digital. Uh, I was like, where am I going? What am I doing? Just following my peers, basically. Really lucky to get into Northampton University where um, I studied performance studies. And I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just loving the arts and performance and this course really opened up my eyes to what the arts can be. It was West, uh, non-Western, Western theatre. It was the arts. It was multidisciplinary. So I suddenly moved out of, I'm an actor to, I'm actually a creative practitioner. And um, how do we communicate through the arts? And also there was greater emphasis on community arts and uh, theatre for change and arts for change as well. So um, Bertolt Brecht was in there. Uh, Richard Schechner. There's a picture up there of Maria, Mariana uh, Abramovic. Uh, and so really looking at what the arts can be and it opened my eyes. <clears throat> and obviously following uh, graduation, you go, what the heck am I going to do with this now? Spent a year doing some stuff, touring to Italy with a performance, um, but very much doing the odd jobs here and there. So I went and often did my PGC in London and uh, I've taught for 23 years in further education. And the final picture below with the students behind the cage was the last performance um, that I directed as part of my uh, teaching career, which ended in April this year. Um, because after 23 years of teaching in FE, I thought I'd like to have a change. And so I um, Googled education in Cumbria, thinking I was gonna get a like for like job working in a college, but actually the Anne Frank Trust popped up and it was to become an Anne Frank worker in Cumbria. And there wasn't a presence uh, for the Anne Frank work in Cumbria. So it's now my job. I'm really excited to have been appointed. Um, I have settled and now I am part of the Anne Frank Trust and I'm really excited for my new chapter, which brings me on to my next slide. Um, the Anne Frank Trust, I had no idea of the Anne Frank Trust. Um, but they have been established since 1991. So working uh, throughout the UK, we have Anne Frank workers in most regions now, which is brilliant. Going into schools, working with communities around anti-prejudice education. It's really important to uh, place emphasis on that the foundation and the inspiration is Anne Frank and who she is, and actually um, the power of her diary and her legacy. Um, so we use the Anne Frank uh, story, uh, the Holocaust, and the writing, um, which is really powerful. Um, I'd say it was badly taught in my school because just revisiting, it's just a rich text and what she, her values, her morals, and what she really wanted to do in the world and beyond. Um, but obviously, sadly, um, she died at the age of 15. However, as I said, her legacy continues. In the Anne Frank Trust, we um, post COVID, we're now back in classrooms, we're now back in community settings. We have online um, 
education, provision, and we continue to do this work. And it's through core programs and bespoke workshops, which takes me on to the next slide, please, Tom. So the educational programs and workshops, um, it is about peer education. So how do we empower young people to go on um, to um, communicate around and Frank, but also more importantly as well, how do they extend on that to fight and address prejudice and discrimination in society today? So one of the programs is Voices for Equality. And it's a two day program and it starts off uh, with who is Anne Frank, her story and the kind of things that she was fighting for. It talks about anti-Semitism and where did it begin? It didn't begin with the Holocaust, obviously, um, but it's about how this extends to, well, how do we um, observe or how do we know um, there is anti-Semitism in society? How do we um, see it, hear it? How do we know when somebody has been being discriminated against for whatever reason? And how, more importantly, how do we take action? And these young people aged between 10 and 15, it might not be the obvious where they can stand up and say, listen, that's wrong and this is why. So we're trying to find ways of them finding their voice and it might be through poetry, it might be through creative writing, it might be through public speaking. I'm trying to extend on that and I've started to do that through using the arts. Uh, so actually creating plays, uh, pieces of art, uh, craft making, and I'm trying to bring artists together as well to, in order to do that, which I'll talk about in a moment when I talk about the community work. So at the end of Voices of Equality, day two, the young person feels confident enough that they have the skill set, that they have the way, they've got an idea about the, the um, particular area of interest. So it might be homophobia, it might be Islamophobia, it might be transphobia, it can be a particular area, it could be disabled, ableism. Um, so it might be an interest and then it's actually how do we mentor She was in, and obviously the range of emotions that came with that, and right up to the day that she sadly passed away. But it also um, places emphasis on Otto Frank and how, if he wasn't handed that diary, it wouldn't have appeared 70 years later. So the young people find out about this exhibition, and then they invite other young people in, and they become tour guides of this exhibition. So it's power of the peer and how they tell the story of Anne Frank and the context. So that's history for today. The workshops um, that we run in schools, that I will run in schools, range from uh, gender equality through to homophobia, uh, through to uh, transgender, which is a new workshop that we run, uh, transphobia. And again, it's about um, finding the voice of the young person, but also breaking down barriers around language and um, stereotypes and assumptions that we might make as well. So very, there's a flexibility there um, that I can offer schools and communities. Again, it's how does the young person find their voice within that? What is it that they're passionate about? And how might they communicate to actually take action as well? If a young person were to uh, take part in the two day workshop for Voices for Equality and History for Today, they can have access to the Youth Empowerment Programme. And from the ages of 10 to 16, they'll be mentored by an Anne Frank worker. If they're based in Cumbria, they'll be mentored by me. And they can come up with a special project and I will coach them through that project. In addition to that, they get specialist workshops, skill build workshops. They get access to a residential in uh, Ambleside. Uh, where the Windermere children were obviously located. In addition to that, they get a free trip to Amsterdam to visit the Anne Frank House, as well as meeting uh, ambassadors from across the UK. So it's really about empowering these young people to become a, a force to take action 
and become united across the UK in doing that. Um, and it's an incredible program. Last week I was in Millham at Beggars Theatre. I worked with a, a, a few youngsters and I delivered Voices for Equality and they went on to develop a film, which I'll uh, share with Tom so you can share it with this group of fabulous people. Um, and they're going to go on to become ambassadors, the first ambassadors in Cumbria, which is exciting for me. Which leads me on to the next slide, please, Tom. Um, Cumbria, um, I was appointed because we got some extra funds which is brilliant and we're hoping to do that annually and we've been given extra funds from I will um, funding pot and it was based on doing some special work in Baron Furness and Millen where there's some great work to be done around prejudice and discrimination it's interesting coming back with a different lens well, I left when I was 17 coming back and then doing this work, you suddenly start to see the beauty of where you were raised. However, there's still some work to do in these particular areas. So I've planned to run a two week community project in Borough Library. Um, and the same will happen in Millen, the Beggars Theatre, those dates. And um, the History for Today exhibition will be placed there for anybody to access. There'll be lots of creative arts projects on the go. I invite lots of artists to come and join me uh, throughout those two weeks. And I'm inviting schools in. Uh, we'll have some young people uh, leading the way and delivering workshops. We'll have primary schools coming in and accessing uh, this exciting provision. And at the same time, um, finding their voice within that too. Um, and the same has happened at uh, Millen, the Beggars Theatre. The funders will be coming to visit. So it's just to evidence actually that this work uh, is invaluable and that actually we should receive funding annually. Uh, my uh, senior manager will come and visit as well just to see the work that I'm doing. Um, I started my work in May, so it's been a fast turnaround, um, but I'm determined that this will happen. And just going back to my first slide, it's this community work and this community impact that I'm fascinated by and how do I integrate the arts with the Anne Frank uh, context, which takes me on to my possibly final slide in how can you help me? Because <laughs> I can't do this on my own. It does require a network of people. Um, what's brilliant is obviously I accidentally, well, I was on a train and I posted something on the network and Tom contacted me straight away and it's just been brilliant to be part of this. I'm also now in contact with a poet, Iwana, who I'm meeting this afternoon and that's come from this network already. Um, but do you have any contacts in schools, primary, secondary? I am making my way into the schools, but it would be really helpful if you've got any contacts that I can contact directly so that my email doesn't end up in an admin pot somewhere. Um, would you be interested in forming part of the community projects? Can you see possible opportunities for future, for future projects or collaborative funding bids as well? Um, and that's it in a nutshell, really. Um, I am open to questions, but um, I just, I'm just grateful to be part of this network, to feel less isolated, because um, I am working remotely now, which after 23 years in working two busy further education organisations, it's taken some quite an adjustment, but I'm really happy to be doing the work that I'm doing and excited about the potential impact as well. Starting in Barrow, but you know, working my way right up to Tully House in Carlisle and going to the schools in Whitehaven and Workington and Maryport. So trying to reach out as much as possible. So thank you for listening and happy to hear or any questions or comments or if you've got any ideas at this moment if not some, please some do reflections in, in chat there already um oh right so Elaine. sorry Didn't emma think. can i invite you just to sort of mention a, a bit about what you're doing with the windermere children's project yes thank you hi lorraine it's fantastic to hear that you're, you're in cumbria it's just so wonderful and great work that you're doing i'm i'm a freelance consultant and i one of my pieces of work is is working on the windermere children's project and the, the potential for a centre at, at Windermere at the Calgarth site. So I've been working on the feasibility study with them. And one of my colleagues has spoken to your the CEO, Tim Robertson, at the Anne Frank Trust. So okay. we're already talking to him, but it would be great to talk a bit more after this. Yeah. It's, it's such an amazing place. And for those that don't know, Windermere is one of the only sites in the UK that, that, um, that in a way, the, the Holocaust touched you know it's a really important place in the uk to tell that story of the holocaust 
um, and this this potentially this this thoughts that there may be a new development there in the future so that this sort of work could get joined up and extended and expanded and it's fantastic to hear that Lorraine's here so we'll I'll, I'll I've noted your email Lorraine I'll be in touch that's amazing Emma absolutely I'm in contact with Trevor Avery yeah yeah and yeah I'm hoping to get an office there too <laughs> He's, he's just emailed me this morning. He's at Yad Vashem in Israel today, actually. So he's got amazing contacts, hasn't he? Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more for Lorraine? Lorraine, if I could invite you to put your contacts into the chat once we've just moved on, that would yes. be marvellous. More two people asking for that. Will um, do. Any more for any more for Lorraine? While we're just, I know you're coming to the meeting at Rose Hill next week, Lorraine. I know you're planning to anyway. So. A chance to kind of meet you face to face there and pick up the conversations further then as well. Definitely. I'll read some of the comments after the meeting yeah. and I'll feed back and I'll definitely put my um, contact details in. Then I'll definitely be there next Friday as well Great. to continue right. the conversation. Well, congratulations on making a move back to, to the the bosom of Cumbria. Um, yes. uh, and sounds like you've got some some fantastic energy and um, ambition for the Anne Frank Trust, which again, I'd never heard of before you you posted that on Facebook this week. So, um, you know, good luck with it all. And it sounds really exciting. And I'm sure we'll be doing business with you, you know, over the weeks and months to come. Thank you so much. Definitely. Thank you very much, everybody. All right, Lorraine. Um, let's move from Walney to uh, Bowness on Solway, where the lovely Al Critchlow is probably covered in paint and in her studio and is preparing and getting ready for the Round the Island Arts Trail, for which I have a leaflet somewhere here. Um, which I've, here we go. Um, which is a lovely annual event, which she helps put together with artists there. So Al, I'm gonna get your PDF here. And if you'd like to tell us your story about what's going on, the yeah. floor is yours. Thank you so much. I'm actually not covered in paint. Oh. I feel quite proud about that um, <laughs> for a change. So yeah, if you would change my slides, that'd be great. So I'm just uh, gonna, briefly give you a 10 minute uh, overview of what the Around the Island Art Trail is. So it's an open studio art trail and it takes place the last two weekends in September. Um, I think this is our fourth year of, of doing this. So it's probably the smallest art trail you'll ever come across, um, but it's small but beautifully formed. So this year we're uh, 17th and 18th and the 24th, 25th of September, if you'd like to come up and see us. So Tom, would you move us on through the slide, through to the next slide? Thank you. So um, we have a wee leaflet that we've made here. Um, we're quite aware that we live in what's affectionately known as the back of beyond. So we've come up with a little leaflet to help people find us. Um, so the trail takes place around a sort of 10 mile radius around Bowness on Solway, which is beside the Solway for Firth, about, we're probably 30 minutes drive from Carlisle. So the best way to find us, or the easiest way, is probably to take the coast road out from Carlisle. And if you do that, you'll come through Headful Rough by Sands, and then you'll come through, as you come out of the village, you cross this brilliant cattle grid, and the road ahead is completely straight. And it, that's, that's you entering the salt marsh, which is this extraordinarily unique environment. Um, so you have slightly alarming road signs on the left that say things like, this is where the water level comes to when the road floods. Don't be put off. You might find yourself in a herd of cows. That's perfectly fine and all normal. Keep going. If you look to the right, you'll see the sea and you're looking at Scotland. And on the left, you've got a wee raised, a raised piece where the railway used to go. And at that point, you're actually following the route of Hadrian's Hall. So follow that road along and you'll find everything changes. The light changes, time runs at slightly slower speed, everything. It does feel like you're entering another zone slightly. So it's a tidal, it's a tidal area and a massive RSPB uh, reserve, huge bird life there. Fascinating Solway mosses. If you have time for a walk around the raised peat bogs there, absolutely phenomenal. Um, likewise, you're, you're in an area of outstanding natural beauty. So although we may be the back of beyond, it's really worth a trip out, I would suggest, especially if you've never been up here. So this year we've got 10 artists and the whole thing is within a sort of 10 mile radius. So it's fairly geographically, fairly tight. Um, can you move us on, Tom, please? 
Thank you. Um, so we've got, although we're quite small, we have got quite a diverse mix of different practices going on. And for people who've come previously, we've got a slightly different mix of artists this year as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's an open studio deal. So these are places that aren't normally open to the public. So it really is a chance to come and, you know, get quiz people, all the artists will be there. All the studios are open 11 till five. And um, you'll be able to talk to people, you know, really ask them, get stuck in, ask them about what they do and why they do it, what their inspiration is and discuss ideas and collaborations and thoughts. And you can get nerdy, you know, if you want to talk all about, I don't know, the best type of paint or, you know, how, how one type of glaze works over another. This is your moment. Come and come and quiz people and really get get under the skin of what they do, which I think you can't really do in a gallery. Um, so that I mean, you can buy things directly. Every studio will have stuff for sale. But um, if you just want to come and look, that's fine too. You know, just come and enjoy, enjoy the time and the, and the place actually. Um, can you move us on again, Tom, please? Okay, so the studios are sort of spread around this little, this little trail. Um, it's called the Around the Island Art Trail because locally this area is called the island. Um, so a few times a year, the road will get cut off by the tide, uh, hence the name. But don't worry, we're not we're not due a spring tide, so we're all good. You don't have to live here once you get here, it's fine. Um, so on the left, that's the lovely old chapel at Amphorn, which is Hillary's studio. Um, and on the right, you've got that picture of my studio last winter. So mine is a very modern kind of purpose-built studio. So we've got sort of quite a range of places. Some people are opening their houses. Some people have quite a big setup like Johnny Leach with lots of outbuildings and barns. Um, so yeah, a really diverse mix, I think. Um, could you move us on again, Tom, please? Okay, so I'll just briefly run you through all the people that you expect to see. So Simone Price is the first person you'll come across. Um, she's actually, before you get to Bowness, as you come through Drumbroth before Park, Port Carlisle, on the left there, you'll see her house, which is kind of this crazy green colour, you can't miss it. Um, so I don't know Simone terribly well, because she's recently moved here, and she works with Fused Glass. Uh, I think she's relatively new. I think you would say she's an emerging artist. Um, and she's got a kiln and a studio all set up and I think is really excited to show what she does and talk to people. So she would be your first sort of person as you come along from Carlisle. Um, can you move us up on again, Tom? Thank you. Next person is me. Um, so I'm in Bonus on Solway. So if you carry along that road, eventually you'll get to Bonus and I'm there on the left. Um, so you've got a studio shot on the left there of some work in progress. Um, and the painting on the right there. So for me, I'll, I'm, it's all happening in my studio at the moment. I've had quite a crazy year of kind of really exploring what I can do with my painting practice. So I've had um, an Arts Council grant for a period of research and development. So yeah, I'm really pushing at the limits of what I can do. So come and, come and see, you know, come and have a look. Um, could we have the next one, Tom, please? And then from me, if you walk up the village towards the church, you get to Karen Quaintmere. Um, so she's just moved up here as well. Um, she's moved up from Cornwall. She's been here about a year, I think, and she's making paintings and she'll have some charcoal drawings, I think, on display. She's kind of, she's sort, sorted out a lovely little space at the back of her house that she uses as a studio. Um, and she's, she's very lovely. I think some people would say we're becoming the St Ives of the North up here. <laughs> um, can you move us on again, Tom, please? And this is uh, across the road from her, her you find the pub and then you'll get to Roger's house. So Roger Golding uh, moved up here at about the same time as me from London. Uh, so for many years he was with the, he worked with the government art collection. Um, so his practice is fascinating. He uses this intricate process of kind of uh, gridding and repetition from photographic sources and then uses that as a basis for paintings absolutely meticulous and beautiful. He's brilliant to talk to. Um, can you move us on again, please, Tom? Thank you. So the next people you'll come to, just a few doors on from Roger, um, are showing at Pear Tree Farm. So these are the only people that aren't showing in the studio, but they both live in the village. So they're using a lovely space that's at Pear Tree Farm. They're sharing the space. So Ali White um, on the left there, has made over many years illustrations for Cumbria Wildlife Trust. And I think at the moment she's working for Westmoreland Dales Landscape Partnership. 
Um, so she's using mostly watercolour and I think sometimes ink as well. I'm quite sure she'll talk to you about techniques and show you what she does. And Anne also lives in the village. She's making uh, 3D pieces and there'll be some charcoal and graphite drawings from her. So they're sharing your space. Um, can you move us on again, Tom? Thank you. And then as you go out of the village, you cross another cattle grid and you'll enter a campfield marsh. So you're really, it's brilliant. You're really on the edge of the salt marshes. You know, it's so weirdly unique. It's all about the sky and the kind of rhythm of the tide. It's, it's a brilliant, brilliant landscape. And John lives right next to the RSPB reserve at Campfield Marsh, um, or used to. John's actually really elderly now and can't paint anymore. Uh, he's quite a well-known painter and for many years his studio at the Solway, which is where he, his work will be on show, um, was kind of set up as a studio slash gallery, but he never quite got around to opening it as a gallery, but it's all set up. So his daughter Jillian has been working hard to sort of revamp it and make it into the gallery he wanted it to be. And she's had some digital prints made of his work. So John's well known for um, paintings of the Solway, you know, big skies and architectural pieces couple of examples there. And she's had a, a range of prints made from his work. So really, I think it'll be really special to go and see where he worked, but also, you know, be able to get his prints and things. Um, can you move us on again, Tom, please? Thank you. And then from there, you carry on, follow that road around. And as you turn the corner, this brilliant thing happens, which is that suddenly you're looking at a different view. So you turn the corner and you're looking across to the uh, Lake District Hills. So when you get to Anthorn, you've got kind of a different aspect and Hillary's chapel is is there at Anthorn looking out across the sea so she's got a vibrant and eclectic mix going on in this chapel it's kind of it's it's a brilliant brilliant space and I think she's invited two friends to show with her so um Kate Farramond and Lauren Abbott I think are showing there as well and could you move us on Tom thank you so from there Newt Narlosh is your place and Ray Pearson who is a fabulous potter. He's got a great big setup there, you know, all sorts of wheels and kilns and what he doesn't know about clay isn't really worth knowing. He he quite often does demonstrations and stuff on his wheel as well. He'll show you what he's up to. Um, so he quite often fires with uh, wood using salt glazes and he makes his own ash glazes and really, really experimental, interesting and wacky ceramics going on there. And the last last person is Johnny Leach. So his studio is just outside of Kirkbride at a wee place called Greenspot. So on the left, um, I, the, one, the photo on the right, I apologise to Johnny now, is a photo of his dad's wood pile because I just think it's the best wood pile in the world. I couldn't resist putting that in. On the left, you've got an example of Johnny's kind of statement piece. You know, he, he makes, his classic thing is, is salt and pepper uh, mills and bowls so he's contemporary wood turner but actually he makes a lot of bespoke pieces so we've got a cat entering the equation um, he makes a lot of bespoke pieces as well and at the moment he's actually making well he's seasoning the wood from um, a large cedar tree that came down in Stor Storm Arwen at Rydal Mount so it's actually a cedar that Wordsworth planted and he's making pieces from that um, at the moment so you can go and see how he does that and he'll talk you all around the process. So yeah, um, last slide please, Tom. Sorry about the cat. Um, oh dear. <laughs> um, so yeah, a warm welcome awaits. Please do come and, oh dear, come and see us. And uh, it, it, would, it would be lovely to see you. And you, you might meet the cat while you're here. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent cat action. <laughs> oh, that, looks, that looks lovely. And uh, I, can, I can absolutely confirm that it's a lovely wild flat big sky place to visit. Um, quite good to go on your bike if, you, if you're a cyclist, quite good to go around on your bike as well. And yeah, here's the leaflet. So that's uh, the 17th and 18th and the 24th and 25th of September. So two weekends. Right, well, let's move from Bowness and uh, the north of Cumbria to the wide expanse that Evan now um, includes. And I'm gonna cross to Simon Wally and Simon, I'm gonna get the link and get your really nice guide up while you start talking about the Evan Open Studios and Art Trail, which we're in the middle of right now. Off you go. Um, thanks Tom. Hi folks. Um, yeah, no, great to be on the call again. Um, I actually work now full time for Cumbria Wildlife Trust. So I'm, I'm kind of following my personal artistic dream within Cumbria Wildlife Trust around reconnecting folk with nature. So I work in a voluntary capacity for Evan. We have set up a art trail, Open Studios Art Trail, which is happening 
at the moment. Started last weekend and runs for two and a half weeks. And we've got a brochure, which hopefully Tom's going to pop up in a moment for us, just to, just to flick through and show you there. That's what we do. We're 170 artists. There's about 60 artists involved in the open studios and the art trail. And that's, that's the front cover of the brochure. Um, I guess we've, we've worked hard. We were excluded from some local exhibitions. So we basically set up our, our own body, Evan, six years ago now. And this is what we do. So this is the sort of front cover. We, interesting, if you can just stop there, Tom. Oh, if you can go back to that one. It's quite hard sometimes, isn't it, to keep it to the right size, etc. But just on the, the, the little piece here, we've done some work with consultants recently just to redefine our offer a bit. And this is perhaps a soft launch of that within the brochure, et cetera, um, about being a resilient, sustainable organization, the community benefit, um, connecting with non-traditional audiences and engaging artists historically excluded. So there's a the piece there, it's just a, a subtle shift. We've been doing this work, but we just being a bit more, um, uh, brave, I guess, about saying that, and that's the work we do. So if you, if you flip on, Tom, and from now on, if you just probably flip on every uh, 30 seconds or so, I guess, because there's 20 odd, um, or 30 odd pages. So the, the maps give you a kind of spread. It, open studios and art trails, I think are brilliant ways for people to engage with artists, for artists to be brave enough to get the work out there. We're right across the north of Cumbria there, you can see um, from our own gallery, which is the number one in sort of based in Penrith. Um, and that's sort of the, the gallery we set up as a permanent establishment. Um, and Helen there, number two there, she's, she's actually based in 4A. We offered our smaller gallery to artists who don't have a home. So I think there's about three or four of them that have um, <coughs> excuse me, collaborated with Helen and showing their work there. OK, Tom. Um, again, some of you will know some of these names, some of you won't. They, some of them are very established artists across the north of Cumbria. Some of them are new artists. Hayden's a stalwart of volunteering in the, in the area. He delivered a thousand of these brochures out and around to all sorts of places. And I guess open studios and art trails always create that buzz. And I think because we run it over two, two weeks, three weekends, it's long enough for people who might not see it at the start to then get involved. Um, and I think it does, it sort of highlights the arts for everybody and just gets everybody talking about the arts. Um, this is Jimmy's Dan Tyrrell. He's a brilliant sculptor. He's done quite a lot of stuff on the Pooley Bridge, the, the new bridge at Pooley. Um, Mary Interlude Ceramics, as seen on TV, she was on the programme around the, the T-Bay services. And then there's my own work and Gwen's doing some new um, sculptures this year. So look out for that. Okay. Uh, it's interesting as well, because there's some just awesome work out there. Sometimes, you know, a lot of the people, they perhaps only show at these times with open studios. Some people have their work open all the time. Uh, Catherine there, that's a brilliant new establishment and studio just down the road from, from Broome, um, doing some printing. Awesome work, a beautiful uh, star wheel print there with the dot Hockney used in the day. And uh, Thora's ceramics. Okay, Tom, yeah. And we kind of, we've had conversations whether, whether it's open studios or galleries as well. We've, we've decided to be inclusive. So the, the Tully in the Carlisle Contemporary Group are included there in Tully. Um, and different people have different opinions about that, but it's sort of, we wanted to be inclusive and just let people have that opportunity to show their work really. And Polly's fantastic print work there. Again, um, beautiful, brilliant group up in Castle Carrot, led by Trish and her photography work. And um, Mariana there is, is a, from the Ukraine at the moment, so she's resident in Cumbria, temporary. Um, we obviously gave her a free space into this, um, the open trail, and just important that she was uh, able to show her work. Again, you know, I mean, it's, it's awesome, I think. I mean, Trish pulled... The, the group of artists together up at Castle Carrick there and they're showing the in the church there so again you know it's it's that local network and local um just in local venues which I think is fantastic and does provide a real uh, sort of focus again some of you will know Dorothy she's a stalwart of probably 80 years of arts in, in the Cumbria she's back at her own studio built by her son so a new studio for Dorothy so if you're passing Dorothy's there and have a look at a new studio which her son's built for in the woods. He's a local wood, wood maker.
fantastic with the And then we've got um, Maggie, some of you will know Maggie is one of our directors, she set up a new studio base in Cockermouth, Recreate and Make with Sarah, which is fast becoming a hub I think, mainly because of Maggie's fantastic connections in the West and the fact she's been a, a local artist and local sort of community leader for 30 odd years, so again pop down have a look at that. Simon Wallace just about to join the Lakeland Artist Society, I think, and possibly coming on board with us as a sort of member of the steering group. And Magda's fantastic work. I think we're coming towards the end. So Natalie's work down at Florence. So again, local venues, local artists, really making allowing the artists to make what works for them, not being too prescriptive ourselves about what people should be doing and making sure that the work gets out there and that people are able to see their work. And then just towards the back here, so there's, these are some projects that people have done. Maggie's Recreate and Make. Maria created a book, uh, which again, if you haven't seen it, Catching Constant Change, well worth having a look at. And Martin, I have to give Martin a plug there on the right. He's designed this brochure and the fantastic way it flips around. And that's brilliant for a lot of people online to be able to see a brochure and see that without having to have the, the physical one. But we do kind of mix and match a bit. And this is just a bit of our... Um, spiel at the end there just about what we've got and joining us those are the orange signs to look out for um, if you see those there'll be a studio somewhere nearby so please go along and, and have a look and uh, thanks very much for the time Tom that's great um, great Simon you know uh, two two art trails you know amazing stuff going on in Cumbria um, and I think you should all feel really proud of, of what we're achieving. And, you know, these are tough times for people in the creative industries. So I hope it's a success for you with all that effort and work being put into it as well, Simon and to Al. Um, I aim to get to Castle Carrick this weekend and I aim to get to um, the uh, Around the Island Art Trail, I think the following weekend. So um, I should be looking forward to that. Thank you so much, great stuff. Right, 22 minutes past 10. We're now just going to cross to the Beacon Museum for five minutes and talk to Will Rees, who's one of the curators behind the Deep Time project. So, Will, while I just pull your website up, um, I'll, I'll allow you to introduce yourself. Great. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, as uh, Tom said, uh, my name is Will Rees. I'm one of the curators of uh, Deep Time commissions for the Lake District Coast. And I think you've heard from our lead curator Aldo Rinaldi in the past um, on these calls, but I'm really excited to speak to you guys today. And it's, you know, this is such a fantastic group and network and it's so, you know, exciting to hear what everybody's up to. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to really highlight our exhibition of landmark artworks that opens tomorrow at the Beacon Museum. And we've been working with four artists and their teams over the past few years uh, with those artists conducting visits across Copeland, um, really learning about its history, its kind of industrial history, its ecology, um, and, you know, finding sites to make proposals for large scale public artworks in the area. Um, and those have been announced now. Uh, and, you know, you'll be able to find out that something about those proposals uh, online. So we've got our four artists, which are, which is Rachel Whiteread, who is, um, you know, a kind of Turner Prize winning artist. She is very famous for her kind of casting process, including shy sculptures, where she casts the inside of buildings, and she's proposing something similar um, for a building at the beach at Drigg. Olaf Eliasson, whose work plays with this idea of the intertidal zone and he's working with the writer Robin McFarlane on his proposal. We've got the uh, landscape gardener Piet Udoff who's working with a large team 
on a project called Seed, which is a pavilion that kind of explores Udov's approach to gardens and, uh, you know, specifically thinking about Cumbrian flora and fauna. And Roger Kjorns and uh, the architect Tom Emerson from 6A Architects who are proposing a new landscape project for the slag heap um, at Millam. So what you'll be able to see at the uh, free exhibition at the Beacon, which opens tomorrow, is really the proposals um, in full for, for these works and these sites. And as I said, it's a free exhibition and we really want to invite people to come and share their opinions on the works. This is an opportunity the, for the public, not just to see the proposals, but also to kind of um, have their voice about them. Uh, there'll be an opportunity to leave comments, uh, also learn more about the artists and their practices. And this will be on at the Beacon Museum in the Harbour Gallery. So the, the gallery just on the left as you walk in um, from the 10th of September to the 9th of October. and and uh, traveling to the Windermere Jetty Museum uh, from the 20th of October to the 20th of November. We also have a free range of events that is taking place, both uh, kind of in line with this exhibition, but also with our wider program. Um, so tomorrow from 11 a.m., there'll be a tour of the exhibition with lead curator Aldo Rinaldi. Um, again, an opportunity not just to learn about the proposals but to ask questions and kind of share your opinions um we have we've also organized free local and international filmmakers um and you know yeah basically making work and doing research in Uh, between 11 and 12. Uh, do come along to that. Um, we have a, a talk with Rachel White Reed, which is uh, now sold out, unfortunately, but all these talks will also be recorded. Um, actually, Tom, if you, if you, top right. So that's, uh, here you can see our different events and you can click on those, book book on there. As I said, they're all free and, you know, would really love to see, see you guys there. Um, we have some other upcoming events with our residency artists, which will be going up over the next few days. And also more talks with our landmark proposal artists kind of happening at the Beacon and the Jetty and possibly online as well. Um, so I would, you know, encourage you to, you know, uh, have a look at our website, learn more about the proposals. Um, you can sign up to our Instagram. We've got a, a newsletter that we're sending out to where you can find out more about the events and the program as it unfolds over the next, uh, well, up, up to the opening next summer. And yeah, do come to the exhibition, uh, which opens tomorrow and um, me and Aldo are in the area. Uh, it would be great to, you know, also speak with you guys and, um, yeah, just hear your opinions on these proposals, which, you know, really exciting for the West Cumbrian coast. Well, thank you. Um, I was at the Beacon yesterday uh, interviewing Aldo for the podcast, which should hopefully come out about the start of next week, um, and got some real insights into the ambition of the project. Um, you know, and it's, uh, I know Harriet and Rob, you're involved um, to a degree in this as well. So this, you know, this, I think engaging with the arts and culture community in Cumbria is a really important part of reaching out to build local support and local understanding for how the arts and culture can re um, energize that part of Cumbria as well and connect people to it. And, you know, think think of Angel of the North, think of um, your man's uh, people walking out of Crosby, Anthony Gormley, wasn't it, who did those lovely things. Public art can make stuff happen and can make, places come alive and I think that's what this project is trying to achieve amongst many other things as well so um, lots of stuff to look forward to thank you very much Will and good luck with um, preparing the, the 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 exhibition and the gallery for the opening tomorrow thank you so much for coming on thank this you. morning I'm conscious of time so uh, I wondered whether Amy you and or Chris might just want to reflect very briefly on the freelance 
training offer that's coming up that was uh, talked about very briefly earlier on this week. Amy, I'll, you... I'll, uh, I wonder if Chris would go ahead and do that because my internet Chris. is very patchy. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Um, uh, some of you might have been there, but uh, we had a half an hour introductory session with Alison Grade, uh, who's presenting this uh, series of uh, Two hour training sessions on how to be uh, an effective freelancer. Um, uh, she's very engaging, and the uh, recording of that, I believe, is going to be going up on the website. So you can, uh, if you weren't able to join us on Wednesday, uh, get a flavor of uh, what she's offering. And the course itself starts on the 21st of September for Wednesday early evening, 6 30. Uh, and uh, you would need to book for that, but it is free. Thank you. That was very beautifully done. Um, I enjoyed my half hour with the people that were there and I thought she was great and uh, really insightful as well. So that's coming up. Uh, so last thing for me next week, we're face to face at Rose Hill or we're online if you can't make it. Uh, but the free lunch is for people that can make it um, should be a really interesting morning. Um, and we'll put the agenda up onto the website and onto the Facebook page and into the newsletter this coming week. I just wanted to finish, if I may, with four lines of Larkin. Uh, he wrote this in March 1978, uh, just to mark the Jubilee, the Silver Jubilee of the Queen. I don't think he was a royalist, but he was a person that, that interrogated people's personalities and was a great observer of life. And this is something from my battered collection of Philip Larkin's collected poetry. And it simply said, that the, the piece is called In Times When Nothing Stood. In Times When Nothing Stood. In Times When Nothing Stood, but worsened, or grew strange, there was one constant good. She did not change. I think that's just a nice little four lines to reflect on uh, a grandmother, a great grandmother who's passed and who actually touched our lives in all sorts of ways that we may or may not be aware of, but she was there and she did not change. Respect to Her Majesty the Queen. Thanks everybody for this morning. Great to see all your faces. Hopefully see you at Rose Hill next week. Have good weeks, good creative weeks. And thank you to all the people that have contributed this morning as well. Much obliged.